Come for the bread, stay for the politics. I'm Ben Walsh, and this is Left Meat Bread. Today on Left Meat Bread, we are going back to basics and making my traditional challah recipe. And for those of you who are not joining us for the first time, you know exactly what this entails. So let's get started. So first, we are going to need to make our yeast mixture. I have six ounces of water here, about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, I have a scant tablespoon, that means just less than a tablespoon of active dry yeast. And I also have about just about a tablespoon of white granulated sugar. So we are just going to lovingly pour that over here, give it a quick mix in. Now remember that this is not going to totally dissolve, so don't expect it to. I'm just going to take our fork here and we're going to lightly fluff it with the tines of our fork. Just swirl it around in there just a little bit until um, some of the sugar dissolves. Remember the yeast is not going to dissolve all the way. And at this point, if you want to set a timer, you can set a timer between five minutes and 20 minutes. Um, really, it just kind of depends on how active you think your yeast is going to be. I'm not going to set a timer because hopefully by the time everything else we do is done, um, this will bloom up nice and lightly. Uh, cover it just to make sure we keep all that nice heat in there. And let's start preparing our liquid ingredients. So, in this container, I have another six ounces of water. This is at room temperature. If you're taking yours straight out of the fridge, um, you just want to microwave it for 30 seconds and let it sit. It'll come a little bit above room temperature, but really, that's okay. And actually, if your water's a little warm, that's not that big a deal because you might be using eggs that are fresh out of the fridge. And so if you are, and if you didn't bring them to room temperature ahead of time, keeping your water a little bit on the warm side is just gonna make sure that everything kind of gets to a room temperature level uh, when it needs to be. So speaking of eggs, I have uh, two whole large eggs and one um, egg yolk in here. I'm just gonna mix these together real quick and add them in to our water. You want to do the mixing of this uh, before, if you can. Uh, you're going to mix it once it's in, but it's more difficult to get at the yolks and to mix all the egg together if you don't uh, mix it separately. So that's why I mix it in this first and then pour it in my water. All right, so there's our eggs and our water together. And we're just going to mix these real quick as well. All right, so the next thing we need to put in is our oil. I have seven tablespoons of vegetable oil, canola oil, um, really any type of neutral oil will work fine. Obviously keep allergies and things in mind. All right. Almost dropped that, that wasn't bad. And then finally, our sweetener. We have seven tablespoons of honey. This is just regular grocery store honey, so Nothing special there, particularly if you have specialty honey or you have a nice flavored honey, um, what that is gonna do is just slightly change uh, the sweet flavor of your bread. So you are always welcome to use a nicer honey, to use a flavored honey, um, just keeping in mind that it will alter the flavor of the bread, which can be a really nice thing. Um, a couple, well not a couple weeks back, a little while back, I um, my father keeps bees, so, I was using honey from the, from the family bees, and it actually had, it gave um, a nice little hint, uh, a little floral hint to my bread. So I highly encourage you to use um, specialty honey if you can. Obviously, I'm not doing that today, so no pressure, um, but it does give your flavor nice little notes of other flavors, which can be nice. If you're, if you're into that sort of thing. All right, we're just getting the rest of our honey off here. All right, we're just gonna mix our liquid ingredients together a little bit here before we start to prepare our solid ingredients, our dry ingredients. Oh, I said solid ingredients. That's all right. Alrighty, so 
And by the way, if this starts to separate, right, oil and water, no big deal. Just keep your fork in here. You can always stir it again. No worries about that. Okay. I'm just going to set this off to the side here just for a moment. Meanwhile, I have five and a half cups of uh, bread flour here. You can use all purpose, but I like bread because it's a little, uh, it has a higher gluten content and it makes the bread a little chewier. If you don't like chewy bread, you do not need to use it. And we're gonna mix into there just a touch of salt. Um, I free pour my salt, but if you want a measurement, about a tablespoon will do. Uh, you do not need to use a whole tablespoon. You can use as little as a teaspoon. The salt is just kind of adding to the flavor of the bread, keeping it a little savory. So no worries there, you can do whatever makes you happy. All right, so I'm just gonna use um, a whisk here to combine our salt and our flour. This is gonna do two things. One, of course, it is going to just combine those two ingredients, but because I'm using a whisk, it's also going to kind of sift the flour, right? It's gonna give us a more um, even, bit of flour here so no, and get rid of some of the clumps. That's what I meant to say. It'll get rid of some of the clumps in the flour so you'll have a smoother flour to work with. And it'll just take a second to do that. Um, everything will pretty much get mixed in together, so don't worry too much if you can't see your salt granules or what have you. Um, it's all in there. All right. So once you've done that, we are going to take our hands or your whisk, or if you're doing this, um, on a board here. You're going to make your little well like we've done in the past. Um, I may yet do that in another episode. <laughs> it was almost a disaster the first episode when I did it, so I have been really reticent to go back to doing it. So we're just going to use our hands and just create a little well. So just put your hands in your flour mixture here and just create a little um, hole, actually a pretty deep hole, uh, and just push your dry ingredients up against the side of your bowl. And we are going to pour our wet ingredients into here. But before we do that, we need to check on our yeast. So how's our yeast doing? Oh, look at that. So you can actually see on camera here, let me just make sure you can see that. Yeah. So there's a liquid bit and then there's a lighter colored foam bit here. And once you have that foam bit, regardless of what your timer says, you're good. Remember this process is just to prove, here, let's see just to prove that the yeast is alive and active. So we're gonna take our yeast mixture here and just pour it into our little well. And then once we've done that, we're gonna give our wet ingredients just one final mix here. Just make sure we don't separate that oil and water too much. And we're just gonna pour that in as well. Now I'm going to use my whisk just to get this started. If you don't have a whisk um, or you want to use your hands, you want to use a spoon or whatever, that's just fine. Um, you can do that, it's not a big deal. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start in the middle here, just stirring just enough so that some of the flour comes in. If you're using a spoon uh, and you're in a large enough bowl, you're not worried about spilling like I am, um, you can start to use your spoon, just bring in some of the um, some of the liquid from the bowl. So you can see that my liquid is really high in my bowl here. So I'm just being a little careful about how I start to incorporate that. Eventually, you will not be able to use a whisk for this any longer, at least without it being a giant pain. Um, so you will have to use your hands or a spoon. Um, I like using my hands. I find it makes it, um, I find it's, you know, it's, more cathartic. <laughs> well, it's just more fun. So you're just going to keep stirring it around in here with all your dry ingredients until you get to a point where doing so becomes difficult. Your bread dough should be about a banana bread consistency, kind of a battery um, type of consistency here. Uh, and then once you're there, you really want to start mixing in the rest of the flour. And just again, I'm using the whisk. You can see I've got lots of stuff in my whisk now. So just be careful um, or else you'll be fishing that out later, which I'm probably going to be. That's okay. So once you're, uh, once you're mixing here, once you're mixing here is done and you have a dough that has incorporated most of the flour um, from your 
dry ingredients into your wet ingredients. And you get a dough that's more or less one mass that you can pick up with your hands. We're gonna transfer that onto our bowl. Sorry, out of our bowl onto our work surface. Sorry about that, can't speak this morning. Afternoon even. All right, so we're almost there. You can see I've got a large dough mass, but you can also see that I've got a lot of flour left over here. So we're just gonna keep mixing that together until it's where we want it. If you're doing a stand mix, if you're doing this in a stand mixer, there is no need to transfer any of your ingredients out of your stand mixer. You can actually use the stand mixer to knead it. I recommend starting on a low setting like stir until it is clear that your standing mixer is not gonna be able to perform that function any longer. It will start to give what sounds like a groan. And once you hear that sound, you just wanna turn the speed up on your mixer up to like two. Again, you're gonna be, the, the best test you have for your bread there is gonna be listening to it. Once it seems like that um, speed is no longer cutting it, you're just gonna whip it up to the next speed. Word of caution that I always give when I'm recommending people use standing mixers, you, it is possible to over knead your bread if you have it in a standing mixer. So just always a warning about that. It is almost impossible to do that if you are working um, with bread dough by hand. So not really an issue there for us since we're making a bowl today. But if I'm using it in a mixer, you definitely want to set a timer. Um, no matter what happens, you really don't want it going longer than 10 minutes. You will over knead your dough, which is going to be really problematic um, in the way it proofs and bakes. That just won't be as nice. And it won't have that same consist that nice consistency that we're so used to having on the shelf. So you always want to make sure of that. All right, so you can see now I'm realizing the folly of using a whisk because I'm now going to use my fingers to get all this out. That's all right. If you were smart enough to use a spoon, feel free to tease me in the chat or the comments. <laughs> I will be better next week, I'm sure. All right, so once you have solved your whisk problem or you are ready to put it on the thing, uh, on your board, Give me a second here. Uh, this is not the most graceful looking part of the show by a long shot, but necessary. We want to get all that dough in the bowl. All right. I think we're done with you, Mr. Whisk. Yeah. Let's just put that in the sink. Uh, one last bit of dough. There we go. All right. So now we still have some flour left in here, so just use your hands, mix it around. The dough should feel soft, but it should incorporate all the flour. This part, by the way, you don't have to do in the bowl. I'm doing it in the bowl to kind of keep things neat. But at this point, because I'm semi-kneading it, you can put it on your uh, work surface here. But you can see I'm just moving it around a little bit, trying to incorporate the remainder of the flour. But if it's easier for you to do it on the work surface, do it on the work surface, no big deal. And actually it is, it's mostly one giant mass. So we are going to turn ours out onto our work surface. Okay. Ooh, so there's a little bit of flour in there. Just use your hand and just get the rest of that out. We uh, we'll inevitably end up adding flour to this, but you know, we put the flour in here um, We should use it and just make sure you get out as much of that as you possibly can Best tool for this obviously is just your fingers um, But if you have a spatula or something you think you can do a better job with that I encourage you to use use whatever tools you have but if you only have the tools that you were born with then feel free to use those too all right. All right. So I pretty much got all the flour out of that. So there's a tiny bit left, but it's not a big deal. All right. So now we're just going to knead a little bit and just get the rest of this incorporated. Knead however you want. One hand, two hand. 
Um, slap method, which again, I haven't taught on this show because I don't have a lapel mic yet. Um, I'm hoping to get one soon. And then we can do the slap method <laughs> together and you won't just hear a really loud sound with that. As I need here, I have some good news that's not politics related. Um, I don't want to give anything away just yet because nothing's really confirmed, but uh, Let Them Eat Bread is going to have its first guests on the show, hopefully within the next two weeks. Um, I don't want to give away who they are or what we are talking about with them, but I do just want to tell you that the show will be a little different. Um, and it'll be a little different for me, too, because we are not going to make making bread on those episodes. We're going to be bringing in different types of foods, um, still basics, uh, cultural basics that I think are important for people to know how to make in an easy and accessible way, but aren't necessarily bread. So special treat coming up. And actually, if these episodes go well and they're popular, um, you know, maybe we'll start to bring other foods and other guests on the show. There are definitely people who I want to talk to on the show about a variety of topics, and I'm very excited for that. So if these shows with guests go really well, um, I would love to keep doing that. Uh, obviously, we'll have our sessions together, and we'll still keep talking about our politics and our, our essentials here, um, but to the extent that we can mix the show up a little bit and make things a little bit more uh, exciting and novel. I'm always open to suggestions. Um, so to the end, if you have a bread recipe that you want to see on the show, or even a knob bread recipe that you think is just kind of a cultural staple and essential food that's easy to learn how to make, even if it's not necessarily easy to make, um, let me know. I will do some research. I will find out how to make it, and we'll make it on the show together, whether I make it with a guest or on my own doesn't really matter. We will figure it out. But I'm excited that the show is taking a little bit of a turn in our 18th weeks, 18th and 19th weeks, next two weeks. And um, so, yeah, uh, if you are watching those shows, please just tell me what you think. I would be really interested to know if that would be good, if there's something else um, that you feel would make the show uh, more interesting. Obviously, let me know and we can we can see what we can do about that. All right, you can see I've just added about a quarter cup of flour here. I usually say you do an eighth cup, but my dough is very wet right now. Still nice and soft though, so I just wanna make sure you're maintaining that nice softness. And just keep kneading. If you're in your standing mixer, um, please stop the um, Mixer before you add flour, or else the flour will go everywhere, and it will not be nice. But if you're on a tray or a table, um, or just another work surface, or even if you're kneading in a bowl, no need to stop kneading. You can just add the flour as you go, as I've done here. And if you're not watching for the first time, you know that the drill is to keep kneading until you have a bread that can pass the window pane test. Uh, as you may know, there are lots of different ways you can tell if your bread is finished being kneaded. But the one that I find is the most tried and true, the easiest to do and replicate, and the one that has never failed me is the window pane test. And that is the one that we do. If you're watching for the first time, I will show you what that means. So don't worry. No need to open up Google or anything. Just keep kneading your bread until it is the proper consistency and kneadingness. Speaking of consistency, what are we looking for? As always, we are looking for tacky and not sticky. We want it to feel like it's got some stick to it, but we don't want it to stick to your hands when you put your hands on it. And when you're working with it, you don't want the dough to end up in a position where it's sticking all over your fingers. It's too liquidy at that point. And the dough will actually become more tacky as you work it to an extent. So that's why we add flour um, to dry it out a little bit and to absorb some and to uh, add to the dough because the gluten will expand and make it tacky. So we are just kind of fighting that a little bit, but not too much, right? We, we want to strike a very uh, intricate balance between the amount of dry ingredient we add to our loaf while we're kneading it 
And also we want to maintain that nice softness and we want to get to a point where it's where it is all three soft, tacky, and well and has well developed gluten. All right. It's starting to feel pretty good. I think I'm going to try and work in this this last little bit of flour here, and then we'll give it a, we'll give it a check. We'll see if it's ready. I think it's probably ready. Could be wrong though. I mean, I've only been kneading for five or six minutes, so um, maybe not. But you never know. So it's always good just to check. And by the way. Again, as I said earlier, it's almost impossible to over knead if you're doing it by hand. So, you know, if you have to check one time, two times, three times, doesn't matter. Now, if you're doing it in a machine or you're using electronics or something else or a bread maker or what have you to knead your bread for you, um, you want to be more vigilant about checking it because it can go overboard. And if it does, it will not rise properly. And if it does not rise properly, it will not bake properly. So. All right, so I have a nice tacky bread. I'm just turning it into a ball. For those who have not been on with the show before, we're putting our hands in a cupping motion. We're slipping those underneath our bread, and we're using the tackiness of the bread to keep it more or less in the same spot, but you'll start to see that the top of the bread will tighten. It'll get more taut, and you will get to a place where we have a nice ball. And so the reason we're using a cup motion, one is just to keep the shape of the ball in a circle, but also to keep tucking in parts of the bread underneath itself so that the dough actually gets more taut. Because we just do this, it's not really need to talk. We have to do it this way in order to make sure we're taking advantage of the natural tackiness of the dough and sliding the bread underneath itself so that it gets nice and taut. All right, so here's our bread. We're just going to take a little corner of it here. Oh, this feels really good. I'm very confident, guys. All right. So now that you've got your little piece of bread, take your fingers and your thumbs, and we're going to start to spread it out slowly, a little bit at a time, until it's, it's like spreading out a pizza, almost. You're just going to spread it out a little bit until it's nice and thin. Don't spread it out too much at once. The whole purpose of this exercise is not to rip the dough, but to get it as thin as possible in a way that allows it to demonstrate how much gluten has developed. So if you're finding it's getting really thin and you're worried about it breaking, what you wanna do is you wanna take your bread dough and you wanna put it up to a light source. And if you can see the light coming through it and it hasn't broken, it's ready, and ours is, uh, can you see? Yeah, you should be able to see, okay. So this is done, ready to rise. So once again, we're just gonna put that back in there. We're gonna re-roll our ball of dough into until it's nice and taut. And if you want, because we're gonna take a second to do something else, just take a little pinch of flour Put it down, and that's going to stop our dough from sticking to the work surface. Should come up nice and easy. So just take a little pinch. There we go. All right, so that should come up nice and easy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our dip bread for rising. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to get a large bowl. We're going to take a tiny bit of oil. If you want a measurement, we're looking for like a teaspoon or less. Um, I like to free pour mine, but um, you don't have to. So start with half a teaspoon, work your way up to a teaspoon. You really don't need a lot of oil. Obviously, if you have a larger bowl, you are going to need more oil. But we're just going to take our oil, slowly move it around the bowl here. And then once it's done that, you're just going to take your hands, or a napkin, and you're going to create a very thin layer of oil, just enough so that our bread dough does not stick to the bowl when we are rising it. Okay. Again, this should not take much oil at all. If you've got too much oil in here, and you'll know, because you'll have a big pool of it at the bottom, 
um, just use a napkin or a paper towel or something um, to get rid of that extra oil. We don't be adding too much liquid to our bread via this method, which is why I say to use so little. But you do want to have a little bit cooling at the bottom because what we're going to do now, thank you, bread. So we're going to put it in the bowl and we're just going to turn it a few times to make sure that it is covered in oil. This is going to keep the moisture in of our bread and allow it to rise nice and evenly. If it dries out, it will not rise. So what happens is effectively it forms a little bit of a crust on top and that crust prevents any further rising. So the reason we cover it in just a light amount of oil here is just to make sure that that does not happen. So I'm going to wipe my hands down real quick and then I'm gonna put a little piece of plastic over this. If you have reusable plastic, I highly recommend you use that. If you have a lid, put it on, but don't put it on tightly because the um, gas is going to be generated, carbon dioxide will be generated by the rising process and it will pop your lid right off or break your bowl. Uh, we don't really want that. So, that's, yeah. I'm gonna put some plastic wrap on here and then I'm gonna put a tea towel on top just to keep the warmth in. All right. I also find that plastic wrap is just kind of the easiest to work with, but it is not very sustainable. So if you have a more sustainable option, I highly recommend you use it. And don't worry, we're going to use this plastic pretty much as much as we can um, for this bread. So it's not like it's gonna necessarily go to waste. All right, oh, we'll use plastic there. It's just there so I can throw it out later. All right, so our bread is covered. Well, it's sealed in the bowl. Cover it with a tea towel here. Don't worry, it's not gonna touch the bread. I am gonna have to wash my hands though, that's okay. All right, so we're just gonna sit this here. We're gonna set us a timer for one hour. If you are staying for the politics portion, um, we'll be back in a minute to see what's on the whiteboard. If you are not staying for the politics portion, then I will see you in approximately one hour when we come back to shape our bread. And actually stick around for that because I am going to be showing you a new way to knead your challah today. So I'm very excited about that. And we will do that in about an hour. So uh, if you're not staying with us, I will see you later. If you are staying with us, I will be right back after just washing my hands and preparing this. All right, set your timers for an hour and let's get going. We are back, it has been an hour. Um, if you are coming back to us from the uh, from the break and you just took an hour and went and took a nap somewhere or something, welcome back. If you stay with us to the politics section, I don't need to welcome you back because you're already here, uh, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. We are back and we're gonna check on our bread and see how it's risen, so let's take a look. Okay, I was gonna do a big reveal, but I think you probably saw. Ta-da! All right, so as you can see, our bread is definitely more than double in size. It's very impressive. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to shape our bread. So this week, I am happy to share that we are going to be making a five braid challah this week. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful bread. Uh, I mean, challah is a beautiful bread in general, but so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this and just put a little bit of flour down, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit here. So we're gonna take our dough, we're gonna, whoop, there we go. Let's just put this over here, shall we? All right. All right, so we are gonna quickly knead this back into a ball. Uh, remember, it's going to rise a second time, so if you knock the air out of it, no big deal. We just kind of want to get it back in ball form, make it easy to work with. Uh, and once it's kind of back in one singular mass, and it's the right shape for you, obviously just use your hands and create that nice little ball shape. Again, we're going to weigh it, and we're going to divide this by five evenly. We're going to roll these out into strips and then we are going to create our five strand challah. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's a lot of fun um, and you can pretty much use this method for any 
polybraid larger than four, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we're probably not gonna make, oh, sorry, any holobraid larger than four that is an odd number. Now mind you, just a reminder, the more braids you use, the more squarular, um, word that I just invented, um, your holla is going to be. So just keep that in mind. Oh, perfect. All right, so this is uh, about 55 ounces here, um, which divides very nicely into five. So we're just gonna try and create 11 ounce pieces. Uh, no, nope, not quite. So just go through, uh, divide your dough into five, more or less um, evenly, what's it called, pieces, evenly weighted pieces. And if you have to do like multiples like I've done, just take all your dough and give it a quick knead and it'll go back to being one nice little ball. Just set that aside. I'm gonna do that four more times until we have five balls of dough. Okay. Uh, oh, it's this way. Okay, perfect. I'm just gonna take a little bit off that. I did the math in my head a little wrong. Okay, so. Okay, perfect. So about all right. So about eleven. Then we're gonna take this one here. Do the same thing. Again, don't worry if they look weird. You're gonna just you know they're they're gonna get reshaped anyway. So it doesn't really matter too much if they look kind of weird. Perfect. That was almost. That was actually almost totally perfect. It was eleven oh one. All right. Let's divide this in half. Uh, nope. Come on, add a little bit at the time here. Close enough. 11.04. And just to check this one. All right. So we have our five uh, balls of dough here. All right. So what we're going to do with each of those, let me just put this over here is we are going to roll these out into, uh, we're done with our scale by the way, but not our plastic, so don't throw your plastic away. All right, so we are going to, and we're probably also done with this too, our, uh, our slicer. So if you want to throw, chuck that in your sink, you can do that, and actually I'm going to just do that real quick. All right, so we're going to roll each of these into a nice, long log, preferably uh, an inch to an inch and a half thick. You want to roll these fairly long, we're thinking like at least a uh, foot and a half, two feet here. Um, it will not actually be that long when it is being braided, so just remember it will shrink a little bit, so if these, uh, and also it'll just shrink a little bit from being a nice elastic dough that we've worked, so don't worry about, um, you know, if it feels too long or what have you. Uh, it's going to be just fine. Actually, let me put this over here because we're going to bring our tray over. Um, I'm using a, um, what is this, an 18 by, 17 by 11 inch tray here um, for my bread. It's the same one I use every week, but I just you know, give you the measurement. So just five strands, pretty much like that. So I'd say it's about a foot and a half long. You can do yours longer if you want, if you want a longer holla. Um, just make sure there's some girth to them, right? You want to make sure that uh, you have a bread that's nice sized for sandwiches or whatever other purpose you are interested in making your bread for. As I divulge on this show multiple times, uh, I use my bread primarily for sandwiches and toast. So I try and get a bread that's tall enough that it fits in the toaster. Um, tall enough and thin enough that it fits in the toaster. All right. Uh, that one can actually probably use a little bit more encouraging. So let's just give it. If you want, but you don't have to, just taper the ends a little bit. This will allow you to make sure that your ends are smaller than that. You know that your holla doesn't bulge on the end. Um, this will make it look prettier. Um, we will actually taper ours 
as we stretch it out. So that's why I'm not doing it here. But if you want, you can see it has a little cone on the end here. Uh, if you want to create a little cone on the end of your bread to taper it off, you are welcome to do that. And it may work better for you. So obviously, um, you're going to know what works best for your rolling process. Uh, you're going to know better than I am anyway, especially because you're sitting with your bread and I'm sitting with mine. So we're just going to go through until we have them the size and shape that we want. Uh, let's roll that one out a little bit more. And by the way, this kind of guessing and checking and, and seeing what works is perfectly natural, perfectly normal, not a problem at all. All right, we've got three down, so do our two more. Yeah, it's going to be closer to our normal segment length, I think. Oh, one more thing. If you have uh, little pockets of air, you are free to pop those. Remember, these are going to rise another time. So don't worry too much about that. All right. The other thing you want to make sure you do is just make sure that your, um, your braids are pretty much all the same width and length. Um, this will help with the shaping of your hollet. It will make it look nicer, um, and it won't look so weird. And, and by the way, the other thing is, too, if they are the same length, what's going to happen is when you get to the end of a bread and you're starting to pinch off the ends, it won't look so, like, artificially slapped together. All right, so we have our five. So we're going to arrange them in the following pattern, okay? We're going to put three on one side here. And we're going to put two on the other. So, yeah. And the reason we're doing this is to make it easier for us to braid. So, we're going to take our ends here and just stretch them up, attach them all together. This is going to be our one end. Don't worry, it looks ugly now, but it won't. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to swing this end over and then underneath that one. So I'll show you again, because I was kind of fast. So you're gonna take the, the one, so there are the three side and the two side, right? So take the braid on the three side, the one that's farthest away from you on the outside, put it over the braid next to it and underneath the braid in the middle. So if you get a gap that's forming there, just make sure that your braids are close enough together that there is no gap in there. That gap will show in the final product, in the baked bread, so you don't wanna do that. And you wanna keep this nice and tight. And we're gonna do that again, outside, over, and then under. 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 And you can see, now, because we're keeping this nice and tight, that we actually have a nice little um, braid going. So that should start to look really nice. And just keep doing that as long as you can until you run out of bread. And so this is going to be our last one here. So over under. And so you can see I kind of have five little nubs at the end. We're just going to stretch those and bring them together and just push them down at the end, and then we're going to tuck that end under. And on this side, we've done the same thing. We're going to tuck that end under. So you should have, and we're just going to bring this together here a little bit. So you should have now, and I'll show you on the tray as soon as I put it down. So you should have a lovely hala that looks a little bit like this. How about that? All right. So that's really beautiful. Uh, it's going to puff up again, so don't worry about what it looks like right now. It's going to puff up. It's going to double in size. We are going to cover it again with our plastic. If your plastic was not big enough, uh, is not big enough, um, you know, feel free to get more. Uh, yeah, this is the side with the oil on it. There we go. Um, right, yeah. So I just turned mine uh, 45 degrees so the long ends are there. This is going to double in size. We're going to set another timer for an hour. Well, we're going to do all of this off camera. And then once it is ready, oops, that's fine. All right. 
So I'm putting a towel over it. Sorry, I cut myself off there, but I put a towel over it. Um, you want to kind of tuck the towel underneath a little bit just so you keep the heat in, but not too much because we want the bread to have room to grow. All right, so now we have set the timer for an hour. When this is done, what you're going to do is you are going to make sure it's doubled in bulk. If not, just keep rising it until it's doubled in size. At this point, there's really nothing else you can do to it except for just let it rise. At that point, or when you feel it's ready, we're gonna set our ovens to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once we have done that, we are going to take our egg. Um, now you can use an egg yolk, you can use an egg white, you can use milk, you can use um, water to paint our crust. Um, just a reminder, if you use a whole egg or an egg yolk, you're going to get that nice golden brown color on your challah. If you use egg white, your egg, uh, your bread will be shiny, but it won't be golden brown. If you use milk, you will have um, a shiny crust, but also a hard crust. And if you, want, you use water, you're not going to have the golden brown color like you will with the egg, but you will have a very nice hard crust if you prefer to have a harder crust on your bread. So milk and water give you a harder crust. Milk is gonna give you the extra sheen and the harder crust, not the golden brown for either of those. Egg, egg yolk, whole egg and egg yolk is gonna give you golden brown and a sheen. And egg white is gonna give you a sheen, but no golden brown color. Just a, you'll just get a regular brown bread color, okay? And once you do that, you're gonna, you're gonna put your bread in the oven for 35 minutes, rotating at about 17 and a half minutes or about halfway. When it's done, you will know because it will look gold, brown, and delicious. Uh, but also, when you knock on it with your knuckles, it will sound hollow. If you have a thermometer, and I highly recommend you get one because it is the best way to tell if your challah is done, um, I highly recommend using that. In the thickest part of the bread, when it's cooked, put your thermometer in and wait for it to hit 205 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, you will know your bread is fully cooked. It can get as high as 210. It is technically close to done at 200. It will continue to cook as it cools. So if for some reason you can't get above 200, that's fine. Um, but really you're aiming for that 205 number, okay? And that is it for this week. As I mentioned earlier, we have a very special surprise coming next week. I cannot wait to show you. Once things are confirmed, I will let you know. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.